today we are going to do a program on returning a value so let's start here i already introduced the class name box demo four. so i already uh, copied the one program which i already done in our last video because this program is similar to that but we have to return a value at one place So that's all. So let's start. So here is class box and display the volume of box. And now our class name is class demo 4. So I, I am correcting it. So compute and return volume. So instead of displaying here. I need to write compute and return value. Return value. So instead of void, I will write here double. Double volume, then return width. We will use these statements at the end. So that's why I'm not removing it double volume then i am writing here return width then height and depth depth so let's see after that there is a two I'm removing this so then I will remove from here then this red mark will go from here so assign different values to instance variable this correct and m box 2 then first box and then second box so we have to write here print state So volume is here is plus one. So now volume is equal to my box dot volume. Yeah, we have to write volume is equal to my box two dot volume and here 
volume is equal to my box one and so now our question is looking good instead of displaying we have to write here get and here get volume of first box and second box then assign different value to my box everything will be same here so i have to remove this cause i don't need to stay and now so it's showing error why it's showing error so let's see and check system dot out print ln so let's give some space to them So there is no error now. So all red marks are removed. So let's read something about returning values. What points we keep in mind while doing return returning values? So here are returning values. There are two important things to understand about returning values. The type of data, data returned by method must be compatible with return type and specified by the method. For example, if the return type of something is boolean, you could not return integers. So the variable receives the value returned by a method such as uh, volume or in this case must also be compatible with return type specified for the method. So now our next topic is adding a method that takes parameters. So here is one more point for returning values. So let's see. The preceding program can be written a bit more efficiently because there is actually no need for the vol variable. So the call to volume could volume function volume could be being used to print a statement directly as shown in the next slide. So let's see what is the next slide. So you can write it this way also. I'm talking about the previous program which we done in the our last video. System dot out printer and volume is my box one dot volume. We can use this because it is a correct way. In this case, when printer line is executed, my box box one volume will be called automatically and its value be passed to printer. So now let's come to adding a method that take parameters. So here is a method that returns the square of the number 10. So while some methods don't need parameters, most do. Parameters allow a method to be generalized that is parameterized method can operate on variety of data and or be used in number of slightly different situations. To illustrate this point, let us, let's use a very simple example. Here is a method that returns the square of number 10. So here is, this is a method of returning the square of number 10 so it's very simple let's go to another slide if you modify this method while this method does indeed return the value 10 squared and its use is very limited however if you modify the method so that it takes a parameter as shown next then you can make square much more useful so here is we are using a square so now square will return the value whatever value it is called with. Here is an example. So it is returning the value. So let's do one, one question so you will understand this better. Let's go to the question. Previous videos are our basic. After introducing classes, the concept is very important. So don't miss these videos, these type of videos, because they are very helpful for you for learning Java. So let's take one more example. box class 
I am using this box class here. Look at it. Send. Because all questions are same but few differences are there. So that's why I am not writing whole program. So here is box class Shiva foundation then this class box and display the volume of box. Here I have to write here compute and return a volume which we write in the our last program. So let's see this program. We can save this for future use. So there is so we compute and return volume. So I, we will continue from this program because few changes we can do here. So these are set dimensions of a box. So let's set, di set dimensions of the box here. I will comment which are not useful for us. Okay, set dimensions of box. Then void set. Then dim. We are using that for dimension here as dim then double and this and for uh, is w for width and h for height and d for depth I think it's not very difficult so width equals to w and height equals to h and depth is equal to d Then set dimensions of a box. Toy class demo five. So we are here. Here our classes the block demo is four. Is correct. Right here. Demo. So all program will be same. So let's see any changes here. I have to write here double volume only double equals to volume we don't write here double because it's a data type initialize each box so we have to initialize each box so let's see here how we are initializing so for assigning here I am commenting this because there is no use of it but we need it later so that's why I am commenting so what we are doing now initial initialize each box lies each box then init then get volume of first box get volume of second box is already done so we don't need to do again so let's initialize each box so my box
my box one and set dimension and 10 2015 same then my box two I'm copying here and my box two then because there is a comma that's why it's showing error so we have to change these numbers three six and here is nine then our whole program is according to our plan so no need to do anything so as you can see the set dimension method is used to set the dimension of each box for example when my box one dot set dimension 10 2015 so it's executed 10 is copied into parameter with w and 20 is copied to h for height and 15 is copied to D. So inside set dimension, the value of the W, H and D are then assigned to width, height and depth respectively. For many students, the concept presented in preceding uh, videos will be familiar. So however, if such things are as method calls, arguments and parameters are new to you, then you might want to take some time to experiment before moving on. So the concepts of the method invocation and parameter and return values are fundamental to Java programming. So let's go to save this and constructor. What are constructor? It can be tedious to initialize all of the variable in a class each time an instance is created. Even when you add convenience function like set dimension, it would be simpler and more concise to have all of the setup done at the time of the object is first created. Because the requirement for initialization is so common, so Java allow object to initialize themselves when they are created. This automatic initialization is performed through the use of constructor. So, automatic initialization is performed through the use of constructor. So, let's do one program and experiment it. A constructor initializes an object immediately upon a creation. It has the same name as the class in which it resides and it's syntactically similar to a method. Once defined, the constructor is automatically called when the object is created. Before the new operator completes, constructor look a little strange because they have no return type. Not even it is constructor's job to initialize the internal state of an object so that the code created an instance will have a fully initialized usable object immediately. You can rework the box example so that the dimensions of box are automatically initialized. When an object is constructed, to do so, replace set dimension with a constructor. So let's begin by defining simple constructor that simply set the dimension of each box to the same value. So this version is shown here. So let's take a new class. And we will name it box demo six. Six. So let's save this.
also our program is similar to to previous program but few but few changes we have to do so let's write in comments what we are going to do here box uses a constructor to initialize the dimension of box of box let's turn so i am taking whole program this program because whole program is same few changes are here first we have to change here box demo 6 then class will be the same and compute the return volume before it we will use constructor so this is the constructor for box for box so let's start box then system dot out dot print ln so constructing then width equals to 10 height equals to 10 we are leaving all the values same then depth is 10 and compute the return volume we already return here and class box demo 6 after compute the return value there is a two brackets here oh 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 then our class box demo where it is set dimension of box so we don't use now set dimension of box here okay then let's go it will come messy then compute the rate of volume we have to we need this so after this we don't need this so i am removing this here is class box demo and this then here is the initialize each box so 
we don't need to initialize each box here and assigning the values we don't need to assigning the value so I'm removing this so that the program will be looking good so this is the program here of constructor and there's no error so let's go to the another topic and another topic is parameterized metrotized constructor so let's read something some more about the constructor as you can see both my box one and my box two were initialized by the box constructor when they were created since the constructor gives all boxes the same dimension 10 by 10 both my box and my two will have the same volume to print statement inside box is for the shake of illustration only so most constructor will not display anything they will simply initialize an object before moving on let's re-examine the new operator as you know when you allocate an object you can use the following general form class where new class name now you can understand why the parentheses are needed after the class name and what is actually happening is about the constructor for class being called thus in the line box my box one and new box let's go to the program so here it's my box one is new box so we are talking about this the new box is calling the box constructor when you do not explicitly define a constructor for a class then java creates a default constructor for the class this is why the preceding line of code worked in earlier version of box that did not define a constructor so the default constructor automatically initializes all instance variable to their default values which zero null false for numeric types reference type and boolean respectively so the default constructor is often sufficient for simple classes but it usually won't do for more sophisticated ones once you define your own constructor the default constructor is not no longer used so now let's come to parameterized constructor so what is needed to is a way to construct box objects of various dimensions the easy solution is to add parameter to the constructor while the box constructor in the preceding example does initialize a box object it is not very useful all the boxes of the same dimension so what is needed is a way to construct box objects for of various dimension the easy solution is to add a parameter to the constructor as you can probably guess that this makes it much more useful for example the following version of box defines a parameterized constructor the sets of dimension of a box as specified by those parameters so pay special attention to how box objects are created so this is very important so let's take another question this is similar to the our previous one question but few changes are there which we can do here So I am using this program for for adding parameters. So let's write in the comment what we are doing here. Here box uses parameterized constructor. to initialize the dimension of box so our program will be same and here constructing a box this is a constructor for box and this will be same and compute return volume but we have to change this
W and D. So compute the written volume. This will be okay. So our class demo is nice. We don't need to change anything here. So here my box and declare allocate and initialize box object so we will declare allocate and initialize our boxes here declare allocate and initialize box objects so here is box my box one new box so we have to write in between their values and so this is now good then double wall it's everything is correct so we don't need to change anything here so now our program is correct set so let's go to another topic and this is this keyword so as you can see the each object initialized specified in the parameter to its constructor for example in the in the line box my box new box here we are declaring and initializing the box objects so the values 10 20 15 are passed to the box constructor when new creates the object thus my box once copy of width height depth will contain the value of 10 20 15 respectively so the now talk about the this keyword java define the this keyword dot this can be inside any method to refer the current object so sometimes a method will need to refer to objects that invoked it to allow this java define this keyword this can be used inside any method to refer to the current object that is this is always a reference to the object on which the method was invoked so you can use this anywhere a reference to an object of the current class type is permitted. To better understand what this refers to, consider the following version of box. So here is a redundant use of this is box double and width, height and depth. And this width is, so you can understand this version of box operates exactly like like the earlier version the use of this is redundant but perfectly correct inside box this will always refer to the following invoked object while it is redundant in the case this is useful in other contexts one of which is explained in the next section so you can if we want to know more about the this keyword so you can refer to the playlist java question answers where all previous year question paper answers are there you can go and refer to this keyword question and you will get more information about it in detail. Instance variable hiding. As you know, it is illegal in Java to declare two local variables with the same name inside the same or enclosing scopes. So interestingly, you can have local variables including formal parameters to methods which overlap with the names of the class instance variable. However, instance variable, this is why width, height, depth were not used as the names of the parameter to the box constructor inside the box class. So if they had been then width, for example, won't have referred to the formal parameter. Hiding the instance variable width, while it is usually easier to simply use different names, there is another way around this situation because this lets you refer directly to the object. You can use it to resolve any namespace collisions. 
that might occur between instance variable and local variable for example here is another version of box which uses width height depth for parameter names and then uses this to assess the instance variable by same name use this to resolve namespace collisions so here is to resolve the namespace space collisions we are using this so a word caution the use of this in such context can sometimes be confusing and some programmers are careful not to use local variable and formal parameter names that hide instance variables so of course other programmers believe the contrary that it is a good convention to use the same name for clarity and use this to overcome the instance variable hiding it is a matter of taste which approach you adopt so let's come to the important topic garbage collection it's a very important topic the question always asked in the exam and i made a video of java question answer where i made a video of garbage collection if it's not there you can mention in comments so let's see about the garbage collection what is garbage collection since objects are dynamically allocated by using the new operator you might be wondering how such objects are destroyed and their memory released for later relocation in some languages such as c++ dynamically allocated objects must be manually released by use of delete operator for example if you want your computer or your phone to be cleaned every time manually how much time it will take but in java you don't need to worry about this problem java takes a different approach it handles delocation for you automatically the technique that accomplishes this is called garbage collection java takes a different approach for delocation this technique is called garbage collection so let's read something more about it works like this when no references to an object exist then object is assumed to be no longer needed and the memory occupied by the object can be reclaimed there is no explicit need to destroy object as in c++ garbage collection only occurs sporadically if it if at all during the execution of your program i it will not occur simply because one or more object exists that are no longer used for the more different java runtime implementations will take varying approaches to garbage collection but for the most part you should not have to think about it while writing your programs so when java collection comes there is a problem the objects who are sharing the resources before destroying they have to use finalize method sometimes an object will need to perform some action when it is destroyed for example if an object is holding same no java resource such as file handle some non java here is non java when object is holding some non java resource such as file handle or character font then you might want to make sure these resources are freed before an object is destroyed to handle such situations java provides a mechanism called finalization by using finalization you can define specific action that will occur when an object is about to reclaim by the garbage collector to add a finalizer to a class you simply define the finalize method so the java runtime calls that method whenever it is about to recycle an object of that class inside the finalize method you will specify those actions that must be performed before an object is destroyed so how we can use finalize method the garbage collector runs periodically checking for objects that are no longer referenced by uh, by any running state or indirectly through other reference objects right before an asset is freed the java runtime call the finalize method on on the object 
so here is the code you can use it here is the finalize method and protected void finalize so we can write here protected void also finalize and then finalization code here and this so here is the keyword protected is a specifier that limits access to analyze this and the other as a specifier we will explain in our coming chapter in detail so it is important to understand the finalize only call just prior to garbage collection it is not called when an object goes out of scope for example this means that you cannot know when or even if finalize will be executed therefore your program should provide other means of releasing system resources as extra used by the object it must not rely on finalize for normal program operation so let's come to stack class as you know about stack stack are controlled through two operation traditionally called push and pump here i am taking it in short because i i am assuming that you already know about the stack so to put an item on the top of the stack you will use push and to take an item off the stack you will use pop so let's do some programs related to this then uh, i will do a program on stack so let's start this program let's make another because this program is very different we can't use previous programs for that this topic is very complex so pause and practice few questions and then go further so here is i am taking stack class name So writing in comment this class defines an integer stack that can hold ten values. so data type int so new int and then initialize top of stack
stack. Then push an item onto the stack. Push an item onto the stack. Void push. Then int item. If equal to equal to nine. then system dot out dot print ln stack is full then else equal to item then pop an item from the stack pop an item from the stack then int pop if is less than zero oh then system dot out dot print ln print ln stack underflow stack under flow then return zero else return stack So it's showing error. So let's see what's the problem here. Void push int item. So now few errors are removed. As you can see the stack class defines two data items and three methods the stack of integers is held by array stack this array is indexed by a variable tools which always contains the index of top of the stack so the stack constructor initializes the tools to minus one which indicates an empty stack so the method push puts an item on the stack to retrieve an item and call pop since access to the stack is through push and pop so the fact that the stack is held in an array is actually not relevant to using the stack 
For example, the stack could be held in a more complicated data structure such as linked list, yet the interface defined by push and pop would remain the same. So the class test stack shown here demonstrate the stack class. So it creates two integer stack, pushes some value on onto each and the pops them off. So let's do one more program of test stack. So let's see what is the difference in both program. I'm saving this. If you want to know more about garbage collector, this, this is a garbage collector here in this NetBeans. And the program name is test stack. Let's finish it. So let's write in the comment what we are going to do. So let's start the program. Stack my stack one equals to new stack. To see the difference here, then stack to my stack two is equals to new stack so I'm writing in comment what we are going to do now push some numbers onto the stack then we are using a for loop int r is equals to 0 then i is less than 10 then increment i my stack 1 dot push so I have to write in between here I so some space to them oh. so for here I will write int i is equal to 10 10 then i is less than 20 then incrementing i then my stack 2 dot push 
I then here is semicolon so let's pop those number of the stack pop those number of the stack so here is system dot out dot print ln stack in my stack one so here is for loop again int i is equals to zero then i is less than ten then incrementing i here then again system dot out system dot out dot print ln so here is my stack one and pop dot pop so system dot out print ln again print ln stack in my stack two so this is now we are taking one more loop so give some space to them here is for int i is equals to 0 then i is less than 10 and i incremented then the last print statement in this question system dot out dot print ln so here is my stack two dot pop some method so our Question is correct now. So let's see for int So now everything is correct and then question is very nice. Oh I forgot to write here public static void domain string a gs now everything is correct 
सो थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग सो वन मे मेन पॉइंट इज लेफ्ट नाउ वन लास्ट पॉइंट अबाउट द स्टैक क्लास एज इट इज करेंटली इम्प्लीमेंटेड इट इज पॉसिबल फॉर द आर ए दैट होल्ड द स्टैक टू बी एल्टर्ड बाई कोड ऑफ द स्टैक क्लास दिस लीव द स्टैक ओपन टू मिस यूज और मिस चीफ सो इन कमिंग विडियो यू विल सी हाउ टू रेमेडी दिस सिचुएशन थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग